I'd like to make a confession to you. I spend a lot of time these days deriding writers who are in the journalistic trades for their lack of go get itness in terms of their research. Specifically, I spend at least a portion of every day saying something like, maybe if you got off Twitter and actually did some real research, your article wouldn't be so bad. Yes, I've become one of those people. However, it's not just journalists who are taking shortcuts when it comes to research. In this modern day of plentiful information, just at our fingertips, on our phone, with us everywhere we go, it can be so tempting to limit our research of the time period that we're writing about only to internet sources. We Google law enforcement in the Middle Ages and then read a few things and eh, that's done. But if I'm being honest, that doesn't really cut it. It doesn't cut it for your readers and it shouldn't cut it for you. So today we're going to talk about different sources, some of which you can access online but are not properly web pages, and some of which aren't, in order to more fully research your novel that does not take place in the present. Hello, shameless writers. I'm Kristen McTiernan, the nonsense-free editor here for your regular dose of writing wisdom. Today in fiction writing, we are going to be discussing research, specifically research that is about a specific time period that you as the author are writing about. I bring it up because I am beginning my journey, I guess you want to call it, of writing the third book in my Mason Timeline trilogy called Union of Souls. I don't know if I've ever announced that title before, but that's what it's called, and I'm very excited. But since I'm a little bit out of practice, I finished writing book two of that series in, what was it? Was it 2008? It was 2015. That's when I published book two. So it's been a hot minute since I've been working on this series. <laughs> I took some time off. I've been working on the Black Magic series, which is set in modern times and requires I'm not going to say no research, but very, very little, and all of it was internet-based. It was great. However, Union of Souls takes place almost entirely, almost entirely, in Restoration England, specifically during the Glorious Revolution of 1688. Now, luckily, this isn't as far back in time as the first book of the series, which was Sunder of Time, which took place during post-Roman Britain. It was actually very difficult to find some of those sources. But here's the thing that I noticed. Researching was, I don't want to say easier, but I didn't struggle with the concept as much. I started doing my research in 2008, 2009. Of course, the internet was a thing. There was a lot on the internet, but there wasn't quite so much. And so I knew that there were a lot of things that I had to straight up go to the library for. And that's what I did. This time, because I spend my whole life parked in front of this screen, I actually had to persuade myself to get up out of my chair and go do proper research. Now, why do you need to do research and why does it matter whether it's on some web page that, you know, somebody wrote, you know, an enthusiast or versus an actual academic source. The reason is because the purpose of your research is to immerse your reader into the world you are creating. This is a world that's long gone. No one alive remembers it, at least in my case. Like if you're writing about something like the 1950s or 1960s, there's still a lot of people who remember it and you can talk to. Writing about 1688, that is not the case. So in order for me to capture this time period, what do I need to do? The things that I need to describe are much more voluminous, I guess. It's, there's a lot more of them that I need to describe. For instance, if you say I went to bed and it's, a, and it's a book that's set right now, okay, we know what that means. I don't need a description. I don't need to know if the protagonist is sleeping on a Sealy or a Tempur-Pedic. Ooh, fancy. But one of the first questions I had when I first moved my story into 1688 London is, what kind of beds did they have? I know that they had feather beds that people slept in, but the question is, does everybody sleep in those beds or just the wealthy people? I had to look it up and it wasn't on the internet, at least not any place that was easy to access. That's the thing about the internet. The internet, insofar as just regular websites, uh, enthusiast blogs, things like that, these get less plentiful and less reliable the farther back in time you go 
and the lower in class your character becomes. For instance, if you are a historical fiction author, a la Philippa Gregory, and you're writing about actual people who existed and were in the upper echelons of society, you're going to find a lot more research. Heck, if it's especially during the Victorian period, you might have that person's personal journals. So you know exactly who they are, you know exactly what they were doing, you would be very lucky. However, if you're writing about someone who was in the merchant class, and especially if you're writing about someone who was in the lower classes, it's gonna be a little bit tougher for you. So where do you go for this information? First and foremost, easy peasy lemon squeezy, go to the library for actual books. <laughs> This is Ian Mortimer's The Time Traveler's Guide for Restoration Britain. As I understand it, this author has, I think, two other books in this series, The Time Traveler's Guides for Different Time Periods Within England. This book alone has been a wonderful resource. Now you can see it's not a library book. I did buy this uh, from a used bookseller on Amazon and you guys, it smells so good. It's got that used bookstore smell and it is obviously well loved. Um, there's no notes in it, but you can tell that the pages have been thumbed quite uh, vigorously. So the fantastic thing about this book is that it's got everything that you might need to know. Where did people sleep? What did people wear? What was law enforcement like? What were hotels like? Oh my gosh, you guys, even if you were upper class, you were expected to stay, you were expected to share rooms at inns with strangers, often opposite sex strangers. Like it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a thing to have your own private room at an inn. Can you believe that? That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my whole life. I never want to be an actual time traveler. Ew, people are gross. But there's also smaller things such as chopping up the different kinds of people. For instance, Scotsmen during this time dressed and acted completely different than their English counterparts. There was no confusing the two. Whereas now you have to wait for a Scotsman to open his mouth to tell that he is in fact a Scotsman instead of an Englishman. Back then, no, no, you could see him coming a mile off. I didn't know that, but now I do. Going to an actual library and speaking to the librarian who I must remind you, has a master's degree in library sciences. If you didn't know that, you can't just be any Joe Schmo off the street to be a librarian. All of those people, yes, even that little old lady who works at your community library, she has a master's degree specifically in library sciences. These are master researchers and they know exactly where to send you. Even if your own library doesn't have the book that will be helpful, they know which library in your local community to send you to. For instance, when I was researching Sunder of Time, I needed to know how arrow wounds were treated in Dark Ages Britain. It's actually really gross, you guys. You know what they did? They soaked a rag in turpentine and shoved it through the arrow wound, pushing out <laughs> the arrowhead out the back um, and disinfecting it with a, with a whole ass rag in, in your bloody shoulder or wherever you got shot. I mean, a lot of times people died from it, obviously, but you know, some of them didn't. So that's fun. How did I find out this information? Well, I spoke to my local librarian, which at this time was in the Clark County uh, library system, which is Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, my local library didn't have the book that I needed. It was just one book. It was, however, at the UNLV library. It was a reference book. I couldn't check it out. And I had to be a student to make photocopies and I wasn't a student. So I had to sit there for hours hours, you guys. And I think this was like 2009. So it wasn't super long ago and just write out what I needed to know longhand and flip phones were still the thing. So I guess I could have taken a picture of the page, but if you remember flip phone camera quality, it was not great. It was not great. So I took notes. A lot of people forget that the library exists nowadays because we have library apps where you can get fiction, you know, on your smartphone, but it has a lot more. It's where you can find research that you legit can't find online. I highly recommend going to the library. Number two, and this might surprise you, but well-reviewed historical fiction set during the time period that you are writing about is actually a pretty safe bet. Now, some people might call it cheating, but it is not. What you are doing is you are using the research of another author who hypothetically speaking might be better than you and you're letting them do the hard work for you. It's not like there have been new developments about this time period. For instance, when I was preparing for Sunder of Time, I read Connie Willis's The Doom Book. The plot was pretty different and actually I think the book was published in the 80s, but that didn't matter because she had done really great research on the Dark Ages. It wasn't in this exact same year, but 
Technology didn't move as fast back then, to say the least. So most of the things were the same. I was able to alleviate some of the burden from myself by reading this absolutely wonderfully researched, very well-written piece of fiction that, that came out many years ago. It was a really good decision and I highly recommend researching well-reviewed. And when I say well-reviewed, please don't infer that to mean it has to be traditionally published. As we know, there are many wonderful indie authors out there who know their stuff, who do great research. Do not think that just because it's indie that it's somehow less than. It's not. Check the reviews, read the first few pages on Amazon if you can, and then buy a copy for yourself to help you with your research. Number three, and if you read my blog, this will be absolutely no surprise to you, TV specials. And by TV specials, no, I do not mean watching that atrocious film, The Other Boleyn Girl. <sighs> no, that's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is historically accurate, well-researched television specials. Now, it used to be that the History Channel was the repository for these types of things, but, you know, in recent years, the reliability of the History Channel hasn't sometimes been brought into question. So maybe do more than one source. PBS is always a good source of this. A&E still runs a few of them. Um, and the great thing about streaming is that you will find a lot of old documentaries. Um, I think YouTube has a great many of them, particularly about Queen Victoria. The algorithm fed me a whole bunch of those when I was up late one night. And ugh, you guys, I binged Queen Victoria documentaries on YouTube. It was so great. So don't be afraid of looking at television specials. Don't think that just because it's a television medium that somehow it's less academic. It's not. It's just broken down into more digestible pieces. And plus you get both the audio and the visual, which helps you absorb it better. And it also helps you visualize it. And you might get ideas for your scenes as you're watching it. And finally, a good place to look is actual academic journals and doctoral theses and dissertations. There are sites called JSTOR and ProQuest, and these are professional, peer-reviewed, academic journals about different facets of your time period. Of course, you want to narrow it down. All of these databases have, have a searchability function by keyword. So if you're looking for the glorious revolution and law and order, you can find that. Or if you're looking for the restoration and fashion, you can find that. There's so many things that you can look up in so many different conversations because in addition to creating this academic work as part of their actual doctoral degree, once you are a doctor and you're working in academia, you have to continue to publish. So it's not like these academics get their doctorate and then like they don't publish again. That's how they become increasingly specialized. And that's how you get these very micro niche papers about the most banal elements of your particular time period. It can be a lot to go through, particularly if you're writing about a popular time period like the Victorian era, but it is there. You just have to drill down and find what you're looking for. Now, of course, academic writing, I suggest this last because some of it can be very dry. Some of it can use kind of dense academic language and um, some of it's just flat, no fun to read. My last bit of advice to you is if you are actually writing about a time period where people are still alive that still remember it, talk to those people first. Honestly, you will get better information out of the people who lived it, even if maybe they're a little bit, you know, senior now. You will still get better information from them that you ever will from any book. So talk to them first if you are so lucky as to be writing about a time period wherein we still have people who remember it. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoy time travel and or alternate fiction, I would highly recommend my Mason Timeline Trilogy, the first two books of which are available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and several other sellers that escape me right now. Oh, Kobo as well. As always, I have all of my links in the space below. And until next time, take care and write well.